a 6-0 victory over Albion Rovers tonight and the end of scoreline looks very convincing. Did it feel like that from the sidelines? We're delighted to score five goals in the first half, but on top of that we could have had a few more. I think we had a scare after the second goal when there was a little bit of a mix-up. Um, I think there was a runner off Tom Beadland. Communication between Bagashi and Stewart it could have been a little bit better and Scully's pulled off a tremendous save to make it keep it at 2-0 at that point. But other than that, I thought the first half was really exciting, really positive and everything that we've been working towards. Talk us through your team selection to begin with. A couple of changes from Sunday, I'm guessing, just freshening things up. Well, it's still early in the season. But the one thing that myself and Jason had noticed when we went and watched Albion Rovers against East Kilbride was we felt that if we broke their midfield line, um, and got at them on the half turn in the areas then we would cause them problems um, hence the reason playing with Kyle in that sort of pocket area in, in the middle just off Nizzy so as I say it worked um, got a lot of joy with Ryan Dow down the right hand side and Big Lewis down the left and got loads, loads of crosses in as I say we scored a few goals from which was pleasing Kyle Turner done his job straight away a goal straight from the off and that must have been the most pleasing thing because it gets everybody off to a great start and it makes them kind of open up straight away yeah, I think Kyle's been a little bit frustrated that he never got st uh, we never started doing him at the weekend. But he showed his quality and his attitude's been spot on in the training. And gets on the half turn, drives at people and then he has the, the composure to pass it into the corner. So, delighted for him. Um, as I say, it gives you a headache selection for the weekend now, but it's a, a pleasing headache to have. As a striker, you'll know how much it means to get goals early on in your time at a new club and for Kevin Nisbet to grab a hat-trick in the first half. You must be delighted for him. Three different kinds of goals, but you know they all count and, and it shows the qualities he has. Yeah, and the great thing for Kevin, it's a dying art, but he's in the box to score with a couple of headers and he's just got that knack of knowing how to do it. That's probably why he scored the goals last season at Wraith Rovers. But you need ammunition. I've always said it, and Ryan Down and Lewis Martin are putting terrific crosses to allow him to get in the box and put his head on the end of things. His other goal's terrific, you know, he gets onto it quickly and then manages just to put it by the keeper. And as I say, he had a couple of other chances in the first half, so um, he could have been walking away with a couple of match balls tonight. Aaron Comrie, maybe the most surprising goal scorer um, tonight. Uh, I don't think he was uh, aware that he was so close to the goal when the ball came across. Uh, were you surprised to see him get on the end of that one? I was surprised to see it was a full-back scoring in the six-yard box. But um, again, credit to the boys. A lot of good stuff. Nice combination play. Unselfish running. And then, as I say, just a nice easy tapping for a full-back to score with. So um, Aaron's been terrific the last two games. And delighted that he's got off to a positive start as well. When it is 5-0 at half-time, how difficult a team talk is it? Because you want to balance up between continuing attacking and making sure you don't get anything silly in terms of injuries, suspensions or conceding goals. So is it about that balancing act and trying to keep everybody happy? Yeah, it's dangerous you know, to go in. How, how can you go in and be critical of the team when they're fine enough or not? The one thing that we did to the challenge was say we wanted a clean sheet. And there were a couple of testing moments in the second half. You're greedy, you want a couple of goals and thrown into that as well. But the pleasing thing is we've come off with, without any injury problems and you know we've managed to score a goal in the second half as well. Kyle Turner did come off at the end there, I'm guessing, by what you're saying, he, he seems to be OK then? Yeah, it, it, maybe a bit early to say whether he's going to definitely be fit for the weekend. You know, It's never nice to see a player stay down for as long as he did, but I've just been into the physio's room there and he, he seems OK, so he, he's a tough wee one. Um, and you'll be desperate to be up for selection for Saturday. Stuart Morrison and Lewis McCann got starts again tonight and you managed to bring on Paul Allen um, in the second half, Gabby McGill and, and new signing Josh Edwards, so a young out for a lot of youngsters and, and that must please you as well. Yeah, and it's de I'm delighted that they've managed to get some game time. I think for Josh coming into the club, it'll take him a little while to adjust to the demands that we put on him, but he got some game time tonight. We'll have to do some conditioning with work with him. Um, Tom Lang, we're also having to put a little bit of conditioning work. He came in a little bit later than the rest of the boys, so these two are, are going to do uh, a little bit of work behind the scenes, but it's important that they get a base fitness to catch up with the rest of the boys. In terms of looking towards Saturday, another tough match against Edinburgh City away from home. Uh, a bit of an unknown venue probably for a lot of Dunfermline fans, uh, but you'll know exactly what to expect from a, a tough team. Yeah, I was on the pro licence with James McDonough for a couple of years. He's, he's somebody that I have a lot of respect for. He'll have his team well organised at a diff difficult venue, like you say. Um, 
they got off to a great start last season and they just tailed away the second half. So they'll be looking to get better and, and kick on this year again. It'll be a very tough game for us to go and try and get a result. We'll be looking to keep our feet on the ground to, to try and continue on this winning momentum. Is that the, the key message? Don't get too far ahead of ourselves too quick. Definitely. It's two games, two victories, which we're absolutely delighted with. Um, having scored nine goals thrown into that, you know, it's a great start. But we go to that game on Saturday and we have to remain grounded. We have to work hard and we make sure that we try and progress in this tournament. How crucial is it at this stage of the season to build up that winning momentum? Last year we won four games out of four in the Betfred Cup. So um, is it important that we do so again this year? And we want to progress. We want to progress to, through the tournament and get to the next round. How we do that it doesn't really bother me, to tell you the truth. Um, and then league, the league games take care of ourselves starting with Dundee. When uh, you look at the squad overall, you signed Josh Edwards, he came on to left midfield, um, but he has a natural left back, good competition on that left side now, you must be pleased to get him in. Yeah, Josh, that, we do see Josh being a left back. As I say, it was just in terms of trying to take people off tonight and look after him. Um, with the game time that we've had in the last two games but predominantly Josh will be competing for a place at left back and that's where we've seen him play at the club. Danny Devine and uh, Ewan Murray still recovering from injuries, how are they looking? Yeah, Ewan's just taking a little bit longer than we anticipated um, with it being a calf knock, whether the weekend comes a little bit too early I don't want to take a chance where we could possibly lose him for a longer period again. Danny Devine's training with us, you know he's back in on the ball, back in amongst the group Again, Danny, similar to Tom uh, and Josh now, he's going to have to do a little bit of conditioning work to make sure there's a base fitness in there for him for the rest of the season. And um, Paul Payton, um, well, certainly will be tomorrow, Thursday, announced as the club captain. What could you say about the armband going to him this season? No, the, the decision to give Paul the armband was purely on the basis of I wanted somebody in the middle of the park. Paul's been a captain before. He knows how to handle it. And if the one thing... Paul won't get phased if he's having a bad game, he'll still get on to his teammates in and, and the way that we want him to. Um, he'll demand standards and he'll not be phased if he's not having the best of games himself. So other than that, it was just, you know, he has an influence from the middle of the park where he can talk to strikers, he can pull wide men in, he can talk to defenders and have a massive influence on the team. We spoke to Paul and he said that the harmony amongst the group with the decision has been fine. We asked Croft has taken it well and, and, and is supporting Paul and Paul's just happy to be out there trying to lead the team whether he has the armband or not. That'll be the kind of um, attitude and characters you were looking for. Yeah, and I think when you look at Lee's performances the last two games, it's been terrific and what the club means to Lee, you know, on a personal note, because it won't have been an easy decision for Lee to accept, but he took it and he took it like a man. And as I say, his last two performances have been terrific. And just to finish up, uh, a nice, healthy Dunfermline support this evening on a, a cold, wet, windy evening. You'll be looking for another good pass support in Edinburgh on Saturday. I'm sure they will. They were terrific through at St Mirren at the weekend. And I know it financially it can be difficult at this time of the season when the games come thick and fast, but um, their support's greatly appreciated. And, you know, I'm sure the players benefit from hearing them cheering us on. Thanks for your time, Stephen.